Assalamualaikum dear students. Uh, welcome to Tin Film Technology lecture number 30. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will uh, discuss about atomic layer diffusion that is shortly written as uh, ALD. Uh, as a part of common uh, deposition matter for thin film and IC publications. I am Dr. Pervez Ahmed. Uh, so let's proceed uh, to our, uh, today's lectures. That is uh, atomic layer diffusions. Uh, that is shortly written as ALD. Uh, breaks every into two steps. So similar in chemistry to a CVD, uh, except that the ELD reaction breaks the CVD reaction into uh, two half reactions. Uh, keeping the precursor material separate uh, during the reactions. So the precursor gases, uh, the precursor gas is introduced into the process chamber and produces a monolayer of the gas on the vapor surface. A second precursor gas is then introduced into the chamber uh, reacting with the first precursors to produce a monolayer of film on the vapor surface. I mean, this, this is somehow uh, we're trying to uh, generate or produce a formal definitions of, atom of atomic layer uh, depositions. That is, uh, we are saying that atomic layer deposition is basically a process that breaks CVD into two steps. And what are those two steps? So let's try to understand this again. Uh, what is uh, ALD or atomic layer depositions? So we are saying that uh, the chemistry of this technique is similar to uh, CVD, but there is one exception. Uh, an exception is that the ALD reactions uh, break the CVD reactions into two half reactions. What it means? It means that uh, EA, uh, we're trying to perform a reactions uh, that we call ALD, and ALD is nothing more but in reactions they break uh, a CVD techniques into two half reactions. Uh, but we should care about that in this techniques uh, we are trying and keeping the precursor material separate uh, during the reactions. So what actually happened in real uh, during the ALD techniques? So the precursor gas is introduced into the process chamber and produces a monolayer of the gas on the vapor surface. This is, I mean, happening past uh, during the ALD techniques. Uh, a second precursor is then introduced and the chamber uh, creating uh, with the first precursors, uh, reacting, sorry, reacting with the first precursor to produce a monolayer of film on the vapor surface. I mean, uh, in this kind of the technique, uh, we utilize two precursors. First, we introduce uh, a one precursor in the chamber, and that precursor, it produces a layer on the vapor surface. And then, uh, we introduce a second precursor, a second precursor gas uh, into the chamber that reacts with the first precursors and produces a monolayer of film on the uh, vapor surface. Then later on, we will uh, explain uh, we will, we will, when we were trying to explain the experimental setup that is being utilized uh, for depositing the atomic uh, for uh, depositing a thin film by utilizing the atomic layer uh, depositions. So uh, in these techniques, uh, film growth is uh, self-limited. That is, monolayer depositions or reactions uh, each half cycles. Hence, uh, we have atomic layer thickness controls of film growth. Uh, that can be uh, obtained. Uh, what it means? Uh, it means that one layer per cycle, thus the resulting film thickness may be precisely controlled by the number of the deposition cycles. Uh, what it means? It means that in the synthesis or the depositions of each film, uh, we have a few cycles. Uh, so uh, each of these cycles, they are be performed after certain in intervals. Uh, I mean, in one cycle, uh, we have one layer, uh, then we have another layer, uh, then another layer, and at the end, we have a certain number of layers, a certain number of cycle, and uh, we, uh, we say that uh, we get uh, to the final point where we deposit uh, the required, uh, where we completed the required number of cycles and we deposited uh, the required films. 
So there are basically two fundamental mechanisms that's been involved in atomic layer depositions. Uh, the first one is called chem, uh, uh, chemisorptions, uh, saturation process. And the second one is called sequential surface chemical reaction process. Uh, this been introduced uh, in 1974 by Drs. Uh, Tomo Santrola and co-workers in Finland to improve the quality of zinc and fire films used and uh, electroluminescence uh, display. I mean, uh, these kind of the, the methods, uh, I mean, it's, it's been introduced first uh, by uh, Tomo uh, Santola and a co-worker and the basic aims of developing this technique is to uh, improve the quality of zinc, and, uh, zinc sulfide film uh, that they were trying or that they were uh, intending to utilize in electroluminescent uh, display. Uh, recently, uh, it's turned out that uh, ELD, uh, ELD also produces outstanding dielectric layers and attract semiconductor industrials uh, industries for making high uh, high K dielectric uh, materials. I mean, initially, uh, uh, the uh, ALD was being introduced for a particular purpose. That is, uh, the scientists who first introduced uh, they were trying to prove the quality of the zinc sulfide film that they were intended to utilize an electroluminescent display. But later on, they find it out that it can be, I mean, that it can produce an outstanding results if it utilized and dielectric displays. So uh, along with that, it attracts attention from uh, semiconductor industries, uh, particularly for making high-K dielectric uh, materials. So an example, uh, a good example of ELD cycle uh, is that for aluminum oxide uh, diffusions. So what we have, uh, I mean, just like we mentioned, uh, we have uh, a few cycles. Uh, that is, uh, just like you can see it here, uh, I mean, at this particular, a uh, figure uh, that is uh, at first we have the substrate surface uh, and that substrate surface is basically of the of the silicon uh, so what actually we have in the first step uh, we introduce uh, tma by tma we means uh, uh, tri uh, tri methyl aluminiums so we introduce tri methyl uh, aluminiums and air here you can see that uh, we are introducing trimethyl aluminiums uh, in air. So here you can see it. Uh, this is trimethyl aluminium that's been introduced in air. So what actually happened? Uh, the water vapor observed on silicon to form uh, silicon hydroxide. I mean, here you can see it. Uh, we have the water vapor that is hydroxyls, uh, hydroxyl from the surface uh, observed uh, adsorb H2O, that is water. I mean, this is the this is the first step or first cycles. So what we have in the second cycle, in the second cycles, uh, you, you can see it here. Uh, TMA, that is uh, trimethyl aluminium, uh, react with the hydroxyl group. So this is this is the reaction between uh, here. You can see this is the reaction between uh, TMA with hydroxyl group. Uh, so as a result of that, uh, uh, we get uh, methane. I mean, uh, when we have these reactions, so as a result of these reactions, uh, we get uh, methane. So what's uh, what happened next? Uh, and step number third, uh, uh, introduce uh, H2O. I mean, we introduce uh, H2O, just like you can see it here. Uh, we introduce H2O. So what happened? Uh, reaction product uh, methane is pumped away. I mean, when the reactions happen, so the reactions product, uh, methane, uh, methane is pumped away, uh, leaving an hydroxyl on passivation layer on the surface that you can see it here. So what happened next? Uh, after three cycles, I mean, just like we mentioned in the, in the previous slide and in this slide. So after three cycles, uh, one TMA and one uh, water vapor falls from one cycles. Uh, here is uh, approximately one angstrom uh, per cycle. So each cycle, including gas injections and pumping, uh, uh, takes few seconds. So uh, after these, just like uh, I mean, uh, uh, we have two step, uh, two step at each cycle, and uh, these are the basic reactions uh, that happens. Uh, I mean, uh, that, that's we call uh, this two step uh, 
two step age cycles are uh, frosts. I mean, here you can see that in first act we have the uh, methane, the second step again we have the methane, but at last we get the, the required, uh, I mean, LD cycles. I mean, uh, for the aluminium oxide deposition, I mean, uh, at the end we get the aluminium required. At the end, we get the required aluminium uh, oxide uh, deposited in the palm of the uh, thin film. So the experimental setup, uh, we call it as a closed uh, system chamber, uh, and it's most common for the ALD. I mean, so the, the, the type of the experimental setup that we utilize for the ALD, we call that closed uh, system chamber. Uh, and the, that closed chamber uh, is basically consists, just like we mentioned, uh, during the first process, that is, uh, we have uh, heaters uh, at the top and below. I mean, here, here we have a chamber. This is the chamber, and this chamber we have the heaters. And the heaters, you, you, this is the upper part of the heater, and this is the lower part of the heater. Uh, and between the heaters, uh, we put here is the wafers, uh, where we have to put, uh, where we have to go on uh, the thin film, or where we have to deposit. Uh, and we have the atomic layers uh, depositions. Uh, this part. Uh, I mean, this this open uh, uh, this open toward the vacuum pump uh, to create the energy atmosphere or the uh, the vacuum. So what we have here, here you can see that uh, we have the temperature control bath uh, where we put the uh, first precursors, and here uh, we have a high speed wall. I mean, uh, what, what for the high uh, what uh, what for we have the high speed wall. The high speed wall is uh, so that we can control, uh, I mean, the, the precursor's amount. I mean, uh, I mean sometimes uh, you know that we need one precursor and then uh, the other time we need the next, the second precursor. So it's part of controlling the amounts or controlling uh, the number of the precursors. And here we have another temperature control bath in which we put uh, the second precursor. Uh, here you can see that it's, it's written as precursor number two. I mean, here we say the precursor that we have is named as precursor number one, and the color of this precursor is red. And here the precursor and the second control bar is, is mentioned as the precursor number two. And again, we have here a high speed wall that is utilized to, uh, I mean, to control the amounts of the precursor. And so we have uh, vapor falls. Uh, here you can see that the vapor fall is moving from the uh, precursor, uh, precursor first and from of uh, precursor second. I mean, here uh, you can see, you can clearly observe we have vapor pulse uh, one uh, that comes from the precursor one, and we have vapor pulse two that come from the precursors two. So that's how uh, uh, we say that the reaction chamber walls are designed to affect the transports of the uh, precursor. So is, this is the typical experimental side of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, some, sort, uh, some sort of you can say that a sketch for. Uh, the ALD uh, process, I mean, how the ALD happens. And just like we mentioned at the start, that how the PLD, uh, how the ALD, uh, 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 the ALD occur, the ALD happen, that is, uh, uh, we have a wafer toward which we try to flow the precursors, uh, the first type of the precursor, and from the second type of precursor, we try to heat up, and we have a proper cycle. After that proper cycle, we get uh, the required uh, ALD. So advantages and disadvantages of uh, this uh, techniques. Uh, so normally you can see that uh, we have a different type of the uh, technique, the position technique, and the step, uh, the step coverage and percentage is taken as a functions of the deposition rate in nanometer per minute. So you can see that uh, we have PVD and PVD de the deposition rate is higher, but here you can see that the step coverage is uh, low. Uh, then from PVD, uh, we move towards uh, PVD type 1. Here you can see that uh, we have those the higher deposition rates, but again, the, the step coverage is lower. Uh, then we move towards uh, CVD, and the CVD, uh, we have comparable uh, 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 deposition rate, but along with that, we, we also have some uh, uh, step coverage. Uh, from uh, CVD, then we move towards uh, PDL puzzle, uh, uh, PDL, and then at the last, uh, we, we have for uh, ALD. So here you can see that, uh, I mean, if you have a clear look, so you can find it out for yourself, uh, that ALD, uh, with ALD, we have uh, deposition rates uh, that is uh, very slow. I mean, it's, we get the slowest deposition rate with the ALD, but we can get uh, best step coverage for, with the ALD. So the advantages of the ALD include uh, stoichiometric film, 
with larger uh, with larger area uniformity and 3d uh, conformity precise thickness controls i mean we have precise uh, thickness controls with the ald similarly a uh, low temperature deposition is possible with this technique a uh, gentle deposition process for a sensitive surface a uh, sensitive uh, substrate uh, the disadvantages of ld include uh, depositions rate slower than cvd and here you can see that uh, here the, the cvd is lying in this particular location that is uh, the cvd deposition rate is almost lying between 10 and 100 uh, uh, 100 nanometer per minute while that uh, for the ld is lying between 0 0.1 and 1 uh, but here you can see that the ELD has uh, the higher step coverage as compared to CVD. So uh, one of the disadvantage of this technique is that uh, deposition rate slower than uh, CVD. Number of different materials uh, that can be deposited is fair compared to uh, uh, MBE. Uh, so so this, is, this, this is all we have for this lectures. Uh, thanks for watching. See you in next lecture very soon. Uh, till then, uh, bye bye.